You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Welcome to the show. Hello, Ryan. Hello. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you, too. Hey, guys. Thanks for uh, making this podcast your choice or a choice of yours. It means uh, We've had some great, great episodes. If you didn't get a chance to listen to uh, Mark Shepard talking about how he almost died, and it, it, it was the most intense, amazing podcast. Um and uh, we've had a lot of great ones, got a lot of great ones coming up. And uh, hey, we could use your help. You know, we're not a, one of the biggest podcasts out there, but we do our best to bring you good quality shows and uh, talk about mental health and facing adversity with celebrities and real stuff. So uh, I'm glad you're here. If you're here for Shelly Hennig, thank you. If you like the podcast after, subscribe. Uh, our handles are at the uh, what, what, uh, at inside of you podcast on Instagram and Facebook and at inside of your pod on Twitter. Yeah, and subscribe. You can watch the episodes on YouTube and you can subscribe. And if you really like the show and you want to give back and support the podcast because we couldn't do it without our patrons, go to patreon.com slash inside of you. All my information for cons, uh, my band, Sunspin, all that stuff, Cameo, go to Linktree on my Instagram, at the Michael Rosenbaum. Go to my Linktree and you'll see all that stuff. Tom and I do a lot of cons and uh, a lot of good stuff. And last but not least, uh, my my uh, puppy, Rosie's Puppy Fresh Breath. I have a product out there to help your doggies with their breath. And their breath will smell like puppies. <laughs> it will smell much better. Uh, it's odorless, tasteless. It's called Rosie's Puppy Fresh Breath. You can get it on Amazon or on my Instagram link tree. And uh, I appreciate it. My picture's on there with my doggies. Yeah. And uh, it really helps. So uh, thanks for the support. And uh, the Inside of You online store has a bunch of stuff. We got uh, Smallville ship keys signed by me, Lexmas scripts, tons of tumblers. We got new stuff coming on. And uh, so I appreciate you uh, a lot. And um, yeah. What else do we have, Ryan? Life. Yeah. Being out in the world. Are you going anywhere? Well, I've been going to therapy. That's what I've been doing. Oh. Uh, I meant like Albuquerque. I, I'm gonna, well, I'm going to go. Well, we're going to a con. Um, I'll have just gotten back from North Carolina when this airs, but then I'm going to go to DC awesome con. But, um, I got this ice plunge, this plunge bath, plunge, bath, plant plunge, bath, plunge, yeah, ice bath. Uh -huh. dude, it does help me. I'm not, I'm not promoting it. I'm just saying this thing <laughs> is like, you know, you go in and it's cold as hell, but when you get out, you uh -huh. feel it's euphoric. Yeah, I bet it is. Were you going with me? Yeah, I bet, uh, no, I bet it's great. Will you do it? When it gets warmer outside, yeah. Come on. It was 48 degrees last night. And That's I cold for us. It was. Los Angelinos. I, but I got right in the jacuzzi. <laughs> Naked. Are you supposed to? I do. Okay. Want to see a video? No. I'm just kidding. All right. Let's get into the show. Um, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Thanks for everything that you do and contributing and helping the show. And uh, Shelly Hennig is, is was, was so awesome having her here. She was such a little light in the room and uh she's done a lot of great stuff i just watched this horror movie she was in called unfriended which was great mm. it was intense and surprising and i was like i, I was like uh i go should i watch it and i got and i was like oh my god and we the horror movie night group we liked it and uh um obliterated obliterated of course unfortunately just got canceled but you could still watch it but um you should watch obliterated shelly's fantastic in that and uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, so it's a great interview, and I think you'll learn a lot. And um, here we go. Let's get inside of Shelly Hennick. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for looking like Ripley from Alien today. <laughs> You've got the jumpsuit on. It's, it looks like a jumpsuit, but Man, it's not. It's a jacket, I... but it matches your pants. So I thought it was a onesie. It's not a onesie, but now I got to Google Ripley from, what did you say? You're not, are, how, I mean, you're, you're young. there's Ripley up there in Aliens. I grew up watching See Aliens Saved poster? by the Bell, okay? See Aliens? That's Ripley yeah, holding, no. holding Newt. Oh, her. Yeah. Sigour I didn't realize Sigourney her name Weaver. was Ripley. Yeah. Oh, well, thank Weaver. you. Yes, great. I'm watching the show called Dragula. It's on Shudder. It's about drag queens. And one of the girl, one of the drag queens is named Sigourney Beaver. I swear to God. No, I love this. Uh, I follow her. I've only done one 
play and it was with drag queens and there it's called Chico's Angels. And there's uh, Frida Lay and Kay Sidia. Beautiful. And I'm forgetting the third. You've had a pretty crazy run, like how you started, right? Louisiana girl. There's another drag queen called Louisiana Purchase. That is brilliant. Swear to God. I got to watch this show. Yeah. Dragula. Okay. Dragula. Yeah. I'm hoping to be a judge on it once. They have like guest judges, like actors and directors come in and they judge the. Well, the now I'm going to fight you for it. Yeah. I bet they'd love to have you. But like obliterated is just action packed. That shit is fast paced. Like, holy shit. I watched an episode and there's a scene where you're just going at it. You and this guy. What's his name? Um, Nick Zano. Nick Zano. Yeah. And like I always say sex scenes are some people are really uncomfortable. I you know, it's it's more about like what you look like. Does it look good? Does it look sexy? Letting go. Is it something that takes you a while? How many takes before you feel comfortable and like you could just go and and is it that's hard, especially for a woman. I have a unique background in that I started as a dancer. And oh. I mean, not professionally, but up until Movement. 18. Movement. Yeah. So I'm really comfortable in my body. Uh, I will say this is the first sex scene I've done like this one. It was it was intense. It's intense. It kept going. It, and it took 10 hours to film. You don't feel sexy after 10 hours. No, you, you don't feel keep sexy your breath, after you 20 keep your minutes. Breath, you're probably not eating the whole day because your breath, you want your breath to be good. We thought, and also stomach to look flat, you know? I mean, Nick Zano was about to pass out. Uh, Is he, he doing push-ups every take and of all course. that? Like, that's what she did. Oh, my gosh. I, I did as much as, I, as prep as I could. I was coming from a movie in Ireland where, I mean, all they were feeding me were like potatoes and whiskey, and I get a last-minute you know, audition for obliterated. Next thing I know I'm in New Mexico and our sex scene is like in two weeks. So I did what I could to get prepped, but you look great. Thank you. I was more, thank you. you both look great. I was, I was looking well, he, at him a lot too. No, he is his, uh, what's the word? Body? His discipline. Oh, discipline. Yeah. His discipline was unreal. Yeah, I, I was eating flaming like hot Cheetos Lamar. Like I, not that day though. Uh, maybe I don't know. It doesn't like, really matter on so the had day. Some flaming breath, uh, probably. But you know, gotta get over that. No, if you're having a sex scene, you gotta eat right, man. Brush your you gotta, teeth. Yeah, but like you don't have a tuna sandwich or flaming hot Cheetos before you're making out. Even if you brush your teeth, you're gonna be. It's gonna be a Cheeto, uh, Cheeto toothpaste. There's only so many things I can worry about. You okay. Know? No. And Nick and I were so tight. I will say the the showrunners are the most amazing people. So we had a lot of conversations about the scene. I really was never worried about it, but it was the first sex scene I had that involved comedy. So that part made yeah, it fun. It was really funny. Yeah. And so we were like, you know, we're rehearsing and we found things on the day. Like there were, you know, a lot of props that we used and um, yeah, I, uh, there's a, actually a, a funny story with the intimacy coordinator there's an intimacy coordinator um, now? Of course. I didn't have yes. that. I'm so sorry. I would have loved to have someone teach me how to have sex. No, exactly. So <laughs> I originally thought that they were just there to make you feel safe. But right. Christine is her name. She is the first intimacy coordinator that I've worked with that contributed creatively. Let's put it that way. <laughs> right. She basically comes up to me at one point and she's like, and she looks like your Aunt Darlene, you know, from the Midwest. Right. And she's just like, Shelly, um, listen, uh, the way that you're him, it's just not reading. And I went, I've before, and she, I got really defensive. She's like, I believe you. Um, but, but on screen. But on camera, it's just, long story short, we had to have this very awkward conversation about what was wrong. And it was the movement. So... Her concern was that I was making him look, his character look small. <laughs> so we had to adjust the uh, physicality right. to, you know, have a different result. Uh, it, it, we have weird jobs. Very, very weird jobs. Weird. And I mean, it's all about, does it look good? Does it look, but like at some point you just got to sort of let go. You let go and you have to forget about it and try to, and also... 
Uh, you know, obviously we have uh, significant others. I'm sure you have a boyfriend. You have a boyfriend. Yeah. Like we talk, yeah, we talked about it. I did not during that. this. Oh, you didn't? Well, you know, and. <laughs> but the boyfriend has had to see this like three times. Right. You don't do that with me. <laughs> it's movie making, sweetheart. No, totally. The the fears I've had of, you know, yeah, you don't want to. Re- uh, it's, yeah, it's just, it's bizarre. But it's like, so what bizarre. do you do? Like, there's been situations where I, you know, what what if like, you know. You're sort of enjoying it because a lot of people say, no, it's just work. You don't enjoy it. There's nothing enjoyable about it. And I'm like, no, nah, that's kind of bullshit. If you're attracted to someone, it could be enjoyable. I have never enjoyed ever, it. Ever, ever, ever enjoyed it. In fact. Not enjoy it, but like, like, oh, my God, I'm sort of attracted to this person. Never. I'm also not really into actors because I know what we have to go through. Mm. And so I'm just typically not drawn to someone who has to deal with the things I've had to deal with. Yeah. So for, I mean, there were years ago, I did have a crush on an actor. I mean, this was like 15 years ago. Kevin Bacon? No, but. You got a crush on Kevin Bacon. I do. Because she wants to him. cut loose. And also obsessed with his wife. So anyway, oh, that sounds wrong. But um, Kira. Yeah. She's beautiful. So I love beautiful. Kira. Yeah. I love them both. They're such good people, they seem like. Yeah. Yeah. We, we gotta, but anyway, you were attracted to an actor. Yeah. And so I was really excited for our first kiss on camera. And it was a disaster. Oh, boy. And it genuinely killed anything right. I'd had. But for what this happens person. if a guy's excited? Because guys, you notice. Girls, you wouldn't notice. Right. So has that happened? Um, Where you're like, it's okay. Yeah, I'm going to take that as a yes. <sighs> Well, if I say no, then like that's embarrassing because you know you want people to. Um, no, it's not embarrassing, but maybe you know I'm just saying. You know they wear cups too, like they wear cups. Yeah, there's like I mean depending I, I on the intimacy did I coordinator, wear a cup but once. I don't know. I wore a jock strap. Have you ever, you know, had a got excited? Yeah, uh, sh- uh, sure. Like I was like, I, mean, I, I, I just couldn't help it. I'm a human being. Of After course. the third take, I wasn't right. But like I was like, hey, look, I'm. You know, compliments to you, but I'm sorry I'm being professional and everything. But like, you know, I sometimes sorry. I don't know what to say. It's like holy yeah. shit. it's like me in like high school. You're like all of a sudden you're like, whoa, where'd you come from? I can't imagine. Yeah, it's like embarrassing. I, I but really like, do want to be a guy just for a day. Just for a day. Just for one day. But I will say, I do I I feel sorry for men when it comes to the fact that they're like meant to have the like f- beat up people. Like you have to like physically protect yourself and maybe your your family like that that, that petrifies me. So I, I do have empathy for men when it comes to that being like maybe uh, an expectation. Like you're meant right. to jump in front of the train to save someone instead of the woman. Yeah, I do. I do feel sorry for men when it comes to that. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I thought about that once. Like you know, somebody said, "Would you if you saw this? Would you jump in front of him?" Mean, yes, absolutely. To yeah. save your family, yes. You think you would? You like to hope that you would. You see these videos. There's this video of an avalanche, and these people are at the table, and the, the husband's like, "Oh, look at that. Yeah, are yeah. we safe, honey? Yeah, no. It's just like uh, you know, it's fine." And then it starts coming to him, and the guy force majeure. runs and leaves his kid and wife. Yeah, it's and the I'm force like, majeure. I don't movie. think I would do that. I would grab my kid and my wife and put them ahead of me. I just feel like that's what I would do. I would take my boyfriend and throw him in front. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> society has taught me that that is what is expected. No, yes. I I'm I grew up with two older brothers, so I have more You got tough. I have You're more masculine tough. energy, so who so knows. So Obliterated's on Netflix. Mm-hmm. I had the best time. And as actors, we're not always like asked to do so much. Right. And I the responsibility I had on that show was so I was ready for that and it was so rewarding and the actors were incredible and hilarious and genuinely like it really was a fun time it was challenging but it was never challenging to where you were like this is impossible like right you'd be hanging you know in a harness for eight hours and you just look over at your co-star and you just be like we got this like we we have each other and that's nice the show doesn't always happen sometimes the lead's an asshole no or the yes complications there's this the producers there's the everybody's trying to make a show and you're not this was a dream it's no fun see that's genuinely and if it wasn't i would just keep my mouth shut and talk about something else like it was hey it was fine because i've done that i've asked people and they're like you know yeah it was what it was yeah no, this um, was this was really special. 
Inside of You is brought to you by Rocket Money. If you've heard me talk about Rocket Money, I'm just trying to save you money with Rocket Money. That's it. This this is designed to save us money. It's so easy. Ryan and I talk about this all the time. Um, you know, you you get something because you want to see it on a streamer, and then you. But that's the only reason you get that streamer. And then what happens? You forget about it. You do the trial, and then you owe hundred dollars in a few months because you forgot to cancel it. Well, Rocket Money is going to help you out. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill, and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Yeah, I I wanted to see this this TV show, but I could only get it if I subscribe to this, we'll call it Fluby. And sure enough, I did it, and I didn't even like the series. I stopped after two episodes. And the next thing you know, it wasn't until months later that I still had this subscription and that crappy series that was two episodes cost me about $80 Jeez. and I can't, you can't get your money back. Mm-hmm. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash inside. That's rocketmoney.com slash inside rocketmoney.com slash inside. Inside of You is brought to you by Discover. If you like using debit over credit, don't you think it's time you also get rewarded? Well, now you can with Discover Cashback Debit. It's a checking account that rewards everyone with cash back on everyday purchases. Plus, there are no fees, period. We're talking date nights, thrifting the latest trends, nights out with your friends, and it's now earning you cash back with Discover Cashback Debit. Check out eligibility and terms at discover.com slash cashback debit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. What, did, were you nervous at all? Were you, did you, did you, in the beginning, uh, oh my God, they hired me on the lead. Um, this is a big show. Uh, were the nerves sort of running rampant? Like, what was that like? The nerves happened the week before the show came out. Wow. I'm like a a machine in that I focus on like what I can control. And we had to learn tactical. Like I had never shot a gun before. So we had to go to, I went from Ireland. I was Atlanta, Ireland to Albuquerque, like just Jeez. one back to back, no time in between. And so we went immediately to tactical training and I, you know, there's comedy, there's drama, there's sex, there's, yeah. Uh, so much physicality. So uh, there was training, you know. But during you know, the show, you're not nervous. You're nervous before it comes out. Correct. That's like that. I, I mean, had, I had so much on my plate. I could, oh, I had to speak Russian. Like, can you still do it? Hell no. I, Come on, speak Russian for me. I, can you do it at all? You're, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Terrible, isn't it? No, nah, I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking like this? Pretty much. I mean, that or are you seems actually like speaking Ita- the language? I sounded a little Robert De Niro, like Italian, but. You don't mind. <laughs> no, that's that's really good. Um, thank you. Uh, Colt Killer. Yeah. That's Antonio Banderas you mm-hmm. work with. Were you, did you not crush on him? I mean, I crush on Antonio Banderas. I crush on him as a person for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's a legend. It was we were in Ireland. Was it uh, awesome? It was so awesome. And Alice Eve, I've been aware of for years. She brilliant actress and also beautiful inside and out. I'm kind, I had a press day yesterday with her and I actually got to know her more yesterday than I did in Ireland. Cause we played like uh cat and mouse characters. Uh, it's a crime thriller. It's a crime thriller. Revenge. Sorry. Yes. Right. And you've got two females who are the vengeful uh, characters, which as actresses, we don't always get, that role. Uh, so that was really enticing. And, um, but Alice was, she 
the thing that I think broke her was like, uh, she's out of my league, that movie mm -hmm. from, yeah. yeah. And I just remember watching that. I, I just started acting and I just remember thinking, wow, she's so beautiful and she's a hot girl, but she's more than just that. Right. So when I got the offer, I, yes, I saw Antonio, but I always say it like Vendettas, uh, like I have to do Vendettas. it. Yeah, with the accent. Uh, but I would have said, Tony, great work with you. He's like, fuck <laughs> you. Yeah, I didn't try that. Uh, but then I saw Alice and I was like, I'm in. I also saw Ireland and I was like, I'm also in. I'm also in. Yeah, but it's it's a really, we're proud of it. Um, and that's in theaters now. It's in theaters now, yeah. And then it'll go to streaming. It'll, yeah, somewhere. I actually don't know. I don't, I don't really pay attention to after. But you'll see, you'll know, you guys will see of it. They'll, they'll yeah. have, they'll promote it and it, things like that. Yeah, and it'll, it'll be available. Cult somewhere. killer. Yeah, cult what killer. What was the original title? I bet that wasn't the title. It, correct. How did you know? Yeah, yeah I, I, it's, it sounds like such a great idea and like, I, I can't wait to see it because I haven't had a chance to see it. Yeah. But I want to see it. It, yeah, it's, but yeah, cult killer. I can't imagine that's what the working title was. No, wow, that's so interesting. You you caught that. Uh, it was originally called The Last Girl. It's about a, a a cult that is kidnapping young girls. I played Jamie, who's fourteen years old and when she was kidnapped, and, and it's sex trafficking. And she yeah. been she escapes like a decade later, and she's out for revenge. And Alice Eve plays a private investigator, uh, and Antonio is her mentor who's changed her life. She's also been through similar things as my character. And then Jamie and Cassie, Alice and myself's characters find each other. And I'm, we're not really on the same team. Uh, so it's this cat and mouse game where I'm dropping her clues throughout the movie. And by the end, uh, Good without, twist. without any spoilers. Yeah. We, uh, we've been through similar things and we find each other in the end and it's a pretty dark ending. In fact, the ending is very brutal. Uh, and so there was a day where I had to do basically a four hour torture scene. Oh, and that was the day I tested for obliterated via Zoom. So I had like two hours from rap from like exhausting so you look myself. Like shit. I mean, it was a, it was crazy. Uh, I mean, you look like shit. I would look like shit. No, I looked insane. Uh, but <laughs> you've got the natural, you know, going back to Louisiana. And like thinking back of how things kind of went. Yeah. I mean, I, I had no idea you were Miss Teen USA. So I take it that at a young age, you were modeling very young, right? Uh, I mean, when you're in a small town in Louisiana, <laughs> uh, like, you know, I've been taken to like a couple of those like modeling, you know, casting, basically my dance teacher, Samantha Sidwell. She was like my mentor and the focus was dance, but she, she really wanted, there was a family tragedy when I was 14. I lost a brother. Uh, yeah. He was 18. It was a drinking and driving accident. How old were you? I was 14. Oh, so God. my dance teacher kind of stepped in for a minute and distracted me, if you will. And she wanted to get me out of Louisiana. Um, and she is the reason I joined Miss Teen Louisiana. This I didn't grow up doing pageants, but I was a dancer, so I was a performer. But and you didn't think you were going to be an actor or anything? or were you? No, I had watched Saved by the Bell. Like, literally, that was it. Like, oh, I didn't even that, know. I don't know if you want to become an actor. Yeah, no, I mean. <laughs> I just was, I, it was not on my mind, but she, um, she just saw something in me. So she was the catalyst to the pageant. But when I went to Miss Teen Louisiana, I thought, and I happened to win, I thought that was it. I didn't know it went on to Miss Teen USA on NBC at the time and like a live telecast. So I just remember the night I won Miss Teen Louisiana, I was like, all right, well, that was fun. Did I get like a scholarship to like a college or like what's, and they were like, well, you're going to Miss Teen USA. And I was like, well, I don't even know what that is. So, and then they were like, what's your platform? I'm like, what's a platform? And they're like, what do you want to, you know, speak out against or for? And, and then they decided since, you know, my brother died in the way he did that drinking and driving would be my platform. And so then I went out and to talk to teenagers in high schools. And I was a teenager myself. Oh my I had gosh. to wear a crown and a sash that was like part of the contract. And I felt so uncomfortable wait a minute 
you're getting sent to these schools in the crown. Yes. And your outfit and talking about your brother. And I'm supposed to be like an equal, right? And like have them oh hear me. Oh my gosh. Me. Why didn't some parent think about that and say, hey. I know. You don't need to do this. That's it, that's ridiculous. It, but it was, like, it was, uh, it's, you know, no regrets, but uh, it, it, I definitely in later years have gone, oh, and I just remember the, I would just feel so uncomfortable. Um, but it, you know, it was a special <laughs> experience. How, uh, yeah, yeah. And I got an acting scholarship from winning Miss Teen USA. How does the family dynamic change? Did, did you, were you raised by your mother and father like mm -hmm. he was around? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And when something tragic like this happens, it's got to affect the family profoundly. Well, it was a distraction. It was. What do you mean? I mean, oh, oh, sorry. You were talking about the tragedy. The I was tragedy, saying, the, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. My parents split up right away. I mean, it was uh, pretty. Yeah, it's it's a big part of the beginning of my life that will forever, you know, affect me moving forward. But I have two amazing parents, and I also have uh, another brother who's eight years older than me, and now a niece. Uh, yeah, I mean, the family dynamic was certainly never the same, but we're all still great people who are just trying to figure it out. Is this something that you think about? I mean, as the years go, cause I, I lost a sister, but oh, I didn't know that. you know, um, but this happened a couple of years ago and she was, she was sick her whole life and it was oh. sort of expected. Oh. We just didn't know when, but she lived till she was like 14 or 15 years old. And you know, my dad was just like on another planet, yeah. like, you know, and I, I just can't, it, it's hard to imagine. But when you're a 14 year old girl, and I mean, you're not a little, little girl where you're, you're not like, I sort of remember, I, you remember distinctly, like the day it happened. Yeah. I was watching, uh, I got a call or I got a call, uh, basically, and they left to go and to the scene and, and then my dance or neighbor called. So she came over and we just didn't really know what the details were yet. And I remember Hocus Pocus was on, I was, so I can never watch that movie again. But that was the movie that was on that was the the first day that, you know, changed the rest of my life. But yeah, I remember a lot. What was his name? Brad. Brad. And were really, you guys close? I mean, he's four years older than me. So we, he was the brother that we were always coupled together. Like he was in charge of me. Um, both my parents worked full-time jobs. Uh, we spent the most time together. But I mean, definitely didn't have much in common. But the last year... Uh, of his life, he had, he just graduated high school and I was going to his high school. And that last year he'd be like, Hey sis, you want to go to Popeye's? So he started taking me to Popeye's and like spending more quality time. He like randomly bought this gift that was delivered. It's this like, God, I haven't thought about this in years. It's like wooden jewelry box with like a teddy bear on top. And it was so random. And bought I bought it for you. Yeah. And it just like came in the mail and he was like, that's for you, sis. I have no idea the backstory, but it was, uh, I just noticed there was a lot more bonding in that last year. And I'm not a religious person and I, I really am not, but there was something there that last year that, but yeah, it was tragic. We, we were not obviously expecting this to happen. So, but looking back, yeah. there's, I can piece together a really nice trajectory of like maybe what he subconsciously knew. I don't know. Did people treat you differently in high school? Do you, did you, do you remember that? I think, you know, leading up to it, I was like, I, I was always in the newspaper for like winning dance competitions. And I was a little nervous about, I dealt with some catty girl stuff like in middle school. So I was, I was definitely nervous to start a new school. And I felt like there was a, an impression of that. I'm like a bitch or whatever. Uh, but I think because that happened, I just felt like everyone felt sorry for me. And it mm. kind of, it took the edge off with what I was worried about, but obviously, you know, what a weird situation. And then, you know, you win Miss Teen USA and you're in high school and that can also cause like people to be like, ugh, God. But I, th I don't know. They How were just so supportive. I was 16 when I won Miss Teen Louisiana and 17 when I won Miss Teen USA. And the support that I got from that hometown was like, I'll never forget it. I mean, what's that? And then you got a deal with Trump modeling <laughs> or some shit. 
<laughs> well, Donald Trump was my boss for the year. Now you I always, traveled with were him. Were you during that thing where he was going backstage and stuff and like checking girls out? He he didn't do that at Miss Teen USA. I mean, <laughs> my experience was. Hey, you were really great. Yeah. I don't do a Trump. Uh, yeah, let's not even. But he, uh, <laughs> no, we we traveled together and. Was he nice? Yeah, he was very nice. Oh. I mean, I had him on my morning announcements. Like I directed him in a video telling my high school, wake up, Destrahan, it's time to get up or you're fired. <laughs> I basically brainwashed my entire school for an for a year. Uh, yeah, um, I so many weird. I remember being at a party with him and Pamela Anderson, and they were trying to hook me up with Kyle Bowler from the Baltimore Ravens, and I wasn't interested. And I was being told like, "You're making a mistake. He's going to be huge." And then like years later, I run into Trump, and he's like, uh, "I remember the I remember you. You're you're the one that turned the uh, football player down." And I was like. OK, he's and, and like that's what he remembers. And he's like, but you did the right thing. He you know, he didn't he didn't, he didn't make, make it. it like that's it's the so, reason you go out with someone because yes, they didn't make it. Totally. Um, he's a loser. I, yeah. I personally never felt uncomfortable. I'm also just from a unique background. It's like male dominated for many years. You're and strong. You carried yourself. Yeah. You, I just I, wasn't I see that. I didn't care about status. No, I, I no. remember we were at the Taj Mahal. And we were doing like interviews and stuff and I got really bored and I was just like, Ugh. and I remember looking up and there were go-go dancers and Trump was like, I, I, he's like, how are you doing? And I was like, I'm all right. I'm a little bored. I'd rather be doing that. And he was like, you want to? So he went up to like a security guard and like whispered something in their ear. Next thing I know, I'm being escorted up. And it wasn't creepy in my experience. It was more just like, all right, have fun. And then he moved on with whatever, you know, interview he was doing. Um, so I, you know, I had a unique, uh, fine experience with him. I just personally am not, you know, a fan of him in politics, but yeah. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't even talk politics, but I just yeah. noticed that and I had to ask, Oh, did that, I, I didn't even know if he was even involved or like he'd even yeah, see we him, to but Thailand. you did. Yeah. We went to <clears throat> Thailand. Uh, so bizarre. Such yeah. Weird. Um, and then you won a, a scholarship to the, you got a scholarship to the New York conservatory from dramatic arts. Yeah. And that's when you really started studying and taking acting that's classes. That's when I figured out really... who Meryl Streep was. Uh, but when did you really feel like, I think I can do this. I got something. <sighs> I will say my first day of acting class, which was a complete shock. It was a breathing class or like a voice. I don't know. And I just remember thinking, this is the weirdest thing I've ever had to do, but I'm kind of obsessed. So I just, I think what was good for me is I'd never done a school play. So I didn't have like, the whole thing is like they they break you down and like get rid of your habits that you got from a high school, you know, theater. But I didn't have any habits. I was just a clean slate. Mm, so I good. was all ears, all eyes. And I just like focused on the craft. And it wasn't until maybe the second year that I had this like, Break down in class, which is also on a VHS tape somewhere. I'd love to see that. Oh, I mean, I have like a clip of it on my phone. Uh, my my chin. <laughs> you carry it with you. Yeah, my chin is just because I'm still close to that acting teacher. I, he's like my acting mentor now in New York, but my chin is just quivering, and he's just like he's just really breaking me down in the best way. And from that moment forward, I became a vulnerable human. And Malleable. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, yeah, I'd say that was probably the day that it just it it got me out of my head and into my yeah, what's the word? Got into, into my vulnerability. Yeah, seriously, vulnerability. Having vulnerability is one of the most important things as an actor, as we know, right? Yeah, that and listening. Yes, listening. We all forget that little thing, don't we? Sometimes we're so caught up in our own shit that we're like, uh, "Why don't I listen and I'll be a better actor?" Yeah. Were your parents pretty supportive during this whole process? Were they like, <laughs> "Yeah." Well, when I like told my mom I was going to do Teen Louisiana, her response was, you sure you want to do that? What if you lose? <laughs> like Big deal. <laughs> but I, it, my point is like they're not really stage parents, but they've certainly been very proud and supportive. There's just been a, you know, like a not like a teaching lesson along the way, but they're completely they're, they're, they get it now. But for so many years, like when I left the soap opera, I booked like a contract role on a soap opera and when i left they were like are you sure you want to do that like what what will you ever find another job you know like 
they just they they it's, they do scarcity. it selfishly. It's yeah. it's coming. It's growing up with scarcity, and you know, having something so crazy and wonderful happen to you, and then being like, "Whoa, how is this going to happen again?" You know, right? I, I love that because yeah, you um keeps me humble. Inside of you is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp Online Therapy. So many of my friends use this. Ryan uses this. This is something that is helping so many people around the world. Uh, we talk about mental illness on the podcast so much, and it's a real integral part of the podcast. BetterHelp makes it so easy for people to get help and talk to someone. Uh, it's easy to to get on. You have to just fill out hardly like it takes two minutes to fill out some little paperwork. It's like a questionnaire. It's not paperwork, you know, and then uh, you're given a therapist. If you don't like your therapist, you change your therapist. Easy. Just like that. Sometimes you don't like your therapist. It doesn't it's not a right fit. You just change it. No charge. It's so easy. You know, a common misconception about relationships is that they have to be easy to be right. But sometimes the best ones happen when both people put in the work to make them great. Therapy can be a place to work through the challenges you face in all of your relationships, whether your friends, work, your significant other, yourself, or anyone. Uh, you know, this happened with me. I had some friends that were sort of bringing me down and I didn't realize it. And through therapy, I realized, wait a minute, this isn't good. How do I how do I uh, fix this problem? And with someone with a trained professional, I was able to really figure things out that I wouldn't have thought of myself. Therapy is so helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit betterhelp.com slash inside today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash inside. We had Keanu Reeves. He was cool. Whoa, you have a Dracula poster. <laughs> I was in that. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I remember I gave mushrooms to Francis Ford Coppola. Wow. What really else cool. did he divulge? Uh, he talked about his feelings. He talked about how he learns to calm down, like how he, he goes, well, I like to sit in silence and just close my eyes and think of this thing that's bothering me until it doesn't bother me anymore. Oh, this, I call that the cycle. I'm trying to stop doing that. Like I kind of get off on laying down and then going through the problem, but I'll do it for like two hours. It's crazy. And then by the end of it, you're like, wait, it's not solved, but I thought I could solve it, but it's still a problem. Yeah. I yeah. wish we could not worry about the things that, you know, it's like, I always say most things are nothings. Sure. And like, it's those little things. You say, Why am I stressed about this? Why am I worried about this? Or this isn't for another month or this isn't. Just be present. Future tripping, be yeah. Present, yeah. And it's so hard to it's be hard. present. It is, and like, I mean, I could speak for myself, but I, it's, you know, we're not always jam packed with a schedule as in a, in this career, and it's those times that I mean, one of my favorite quotes I read in a Link Clutter movie. It's a uh, artists are menace. Wait, artists who don't create are a menace to society, and those are the times where my brain is overworking mm -hmm. and I have to really be conscious of like hobbies or helping friends out, whatever gets my socks off at the time. Yeah. Cause your brain will just spiral. And I always stories. say, who said it? I read this quote. I think I've said this before, but you're not tired. You're just bored. Mm. And it's so true. If you're tired, usually you're around the house, you're not doing anything, but if you have something to do, you're going to have a passion and energy and enthusiasm. So get up and do something. Get up. Get up. Uh, Teen Wolf, did you audition for it? No. What? I know. You didn't audition for Teen Wolf? Mm -mm. They just said, Shelly? So I auditioned for a show called Zack Stone is going to be famous with Bo Burnham. And it was a show for MTV. It was one of the first things Bo did outside of YouTube. And... 
I booked that and that was, I mean, I adore Bo. Uh, that was a great experience. Um, and because of that, it was Wendy O'Brien who cast it. So when like a couple years later, Wendy just called my team and said, there's this guest star on Teen Wolf. Would Shelly be interested in just coming in and knocking it out? And, and I was, I talked to my friend whose boyfriend was on the show and I was like, are they like, a good cast, like as in, are they cool? Because I come from an experience. Who's the boyfriend? Uh, Dylan O'Brien. Ah, Dylan O'Brien. And um, she was like, "No, they're amazing. You'll have so much fun. Do it." So I did it, and then uh, when it was over, I got a call like a week later, and the the creator of it, uh, Jeff Davis, wanted me as a series regular, and I had some wow, yeah. So I, I was nervous about, especially like playing teenager, and I just found that like. They assume you're going to be a nightmare because you're playing young, but you're not. I'm like a decade older than the age I'm playing. And so yeah. there's like a miscommunication there. Um, so I was, I was a little afraid of joining in like another like teen. Uh, so you didn't say yes right away. Well, I had to think about it, which is so like, who did I think I was? But I just was considering my personal life and how I felt about everything. And I remember talking to my manager about it and he was like, you know, you've been wanting to do more comedy. He's like, the guest star that you did, it's pretty open-ended, like how your character could be. He's like, what if you asked Jeff to make your character funny? And I was like, that's like, how do I say that? That's like, I, I don't know. And I just thought about it. And then Je I was at a gas station. And I remember and Jeff calls me and he's like, so how do you feel about, you know, doing series regular? And I was like, will you make my character funny? He just said it. And he was like, are you funny? <laughs> And I was like, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> and he's like, I guess we'll find out. And, and then he did. made my character funny. And three years later. Many, I mean, at this point, five, six years. But yeah, we did, I did do three or four seasons. But, and then you did the movie. And then we did the movie, which I never even considered would I mean, be who a did, thing. It's so lucky. It's like Smallville did, never did a fucking movie. Hey, it's not too late. It's Come too on. late. We're old. We're an I old I don't know. I bet those now. cons are still People just popping. People have died. We're oh. less super than we were. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what voice that is. Um, but Teen Wolf, man, what a following. Do you go to cons? Have you ever gotten a con side just autograph? Just at this one uh, this weekend in Paris. How was it? Big in Paris. We are big are in Paris. Are you serious? Oh my God. Paris. Did you feel like Elvis? No. <laughs> Stark. We feel like Princess Diana being chased in cars. Like it's, That much. I am telling you. They noticed you right away. It's wild. It's wild. Did you love it? I am petrified. Are I, you? I am. You I'm don't genuinely, like the attention? No. You hate I like attention. when someone says, I love your work. You don't something. like when somebody goes, ah! No, it scares the sh out of me. I'm, I'm not supposed to curse, right? Yeah, I just said F. Oh, I didn't hear We it. could bleep F, can't we? Okay. No, we can't. My first interview for Obliterated was in London on the BBC radio. You said F. And I said, shit. But the, in, the host profusely apologized to her listeners. I was mortified. Could we, could we get an example? Like, let's say I'm going to be the guy. I'm going to be the host of the show and I Aww. want you to say shit Aww. and then I'll, I'll continue. Okay. Yeah. So, um, did you love working on, um, Teen Wolf? Shit. It was so fun. Oh my God. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so sorry. I apologize what? for, for Miss Hennig's language. Um, oh. we, we don't talk like this on the program and i apologize profusely uh well Shelley, listen, it's okay let's no, continue no listen let's if continue. you're you'll if be you're hearing listening. from the queen <laughs> 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 you like horror movies i hate them because you've done two i hate them why i don't I mind doing them. them you like watching them or I you like love doing horror them movies though well, i've done two but no i like i like watching good like thrillers good um psychological yeah. good yeah. paranormal yeah. Uh, Paranormal activity. I like real stuff. Yeah, I, like, I do too. Yeah. I like, like documentaries and all that stuff. Yeah. That's mainly what I watch. That's mainly reality what I watch. shows. But people try to get me to watch some of these shows. And after one episode, I'm like, this was nominated. Yeah. I don't want to watch any more of these. I, I typically like documentaries or reality, but no horror films. I mean, look, I'm really proud of one that I did called Unfriended that was like not meant to be as successful maybe as it had become, but it was like previous to the pandemic when no one had done like a movie on Skype. 
And that's how long ago it was. Uh, they keep, I see that movie. I got to watch it. Honestly, you should watch it. It's Is it creepy? Really, well, I think you'll find as an actor, writing it down right this now. part interesting. So we filmed in a house, like we were getting paid, I don't know, like a hundred dollars a day. It was just a, I liked the script because it was mainly improvised and it was a unique idea to do it on a computer. And so when we get to this house, I have a bit of a spoiler alert, but like I, I have the most scenes and, uh, <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> and, um, I, it was, it was hard, like starting and stopping all the time. And I, one day I was looking around, I was like, you know, each character has their own bedroom. We're all in the same house. We're all hooked up to laptops with GoPros that all connected to this like centerpiece in the living room where the director and the writer sat and watched everybody in real time. They like made up this technology for this movie. And we were starting and stopping each scene. And I'm like, we have this script memorized. It's improvised as well. We have laptops. You can actually pull up the script if you get lost we're like texting each other. It was very interactive. So one day at lunch, I was like, you know, oh, and I had done predominantly television and and uh, I'd never done like an indie movie. So I thought it was so cool that I was doing this like, and how many days kind of backwoods indie movie. I don't know, like 17. But then when Blumhouse Universal bought it, we did another week. Right. But yeah, you know, it was like, or maybe 10 days. I, I can't remember. But I just remember being like, we're lit. We're set up. Can we just do this in one take? Like over and over. And my co-stars were like, this is going to be a freaking disaster. They had done more indie projects where like maybe that would not be a great idea. But you've done theater. Uh, yes, I've done theater with drag queens. Um, <laughs> listen to me. But I, yeah, my co-stars were not pleased, but we did it anyway. And I think it was one of the most rewarding experiences for every one of us. That's and so we continued awesome. to do the movie in one take. So it'd be like an hour and a half of so it felt pure real. torture. Yeah. And they would send us uh, graphics through our laptops that would like freak us out. They wouldn't tell us when they turned the lights off. Like they were surprising us in real time. It was so unique. It's like a haunted special. house that yeah. you're walking through. Yeah. Interactive haunted house. Oh, exactly. I gotta watch Unfriended. It's really fun. Leanne, have you ever had any extremely scary or supernatural experiences? Mm -hmm. You have? But via my friend. So it's really her experience, but I was next to the vision she had but it was um uh she she was laying on the bed and i was just kind of standing by her dresser and this was like maybe a year after my brother passed away and she we were just talking normally and then all of a sudden she went completely white and couldn't talk and then tears just started coming down her face and i'm just like panicking and I, i'm like i jump on the bed and i go to talk and she's like shh and she's just staring and she apparently saw like a shadow of like a male figure walk in, leave a, a light behind me and then exit. And then the next night I got into a car accident on the same street that my brother's car accident was on. Yikes. To this day, I like call her and I'm like, did you make that up? She's like, no. So I don't know. It wasn't my vision. It was hers. And who knows but what it means. You're part but of it. it I was part like... of it. Yeah. Wow. Just there's a lot, you know, the stuff about the the soap opera, I find that terrifying because you did Days of Our Lives. Mm -hmm. I used to watch Days of Our Lives with Stefano. Yeah. Was Stefano on R. there still? Yes, he was. Yeah. One I day I was doing a school. scene and he was like, speak up. <laughs> he didn't like how low my voice was. Jeez. I know. Is he still alive? Like, no, he died, I think, like five years ago. Mm, Stefano. My parents still watch the show. They don't care if I'm on it or not. That's their f favorite piece of work you've done. Literally. Yeah. Like, a lot of people love those soap operas. Totally. But, you know, I look at it and I'm like, how does she learn all these pages of dialogue every day? I would be riddled with anxiety. That was the easiest part. Actually, you just reminded me, I listened to your podcast with Kristen Bell, who I had the pleasure of well, working with. Oh, that's an with. old one. Yes, I know. But I saw her. I worked with her. I did a, a Netflix show with her, The Woman in the House across oh, the nice. street from She's the girl lovely, in the window. I'm lovely. obsessed with her as well. Yeah. Um, but I remember her saying in your in your podcast, like, she can memorize any line, like pages, but she cannot remember anything in real life. I'm the same. When it comes to a script, I've got it memorized after reading it twice. That was not the hard part. I wish I had that. I'm sorry. What was the hard part? The hard part is especially, and I don't know what it is, what it's like today, but in my stint on the soaps, the woman was always expected to carry the emotional 
outbursts. And so every day I was having to cry or explode and it would make my stomach hurt. And I, <laughs> really? I, I just lived on stress, uh, Zantac or whatever for indigestion. Not oh yeah. Zantac, yeah, indigestion. yeah. It would just make my, my stomach hurt, but that was, that was the hard part, but you did it. The best part about soap opera training, I call it is you get one take. So it made me a really good auditioner. And now I'm pissed with these self tapes because that was my edge is I just would go in, do it. And then we're good and take a note maybe. Um, whereas now you can spend hours doing these freaking uh, self tapes, which is against my rule. Yeah. It's such a weird thing. Do you, how, do you have like a rule of like, I just do two takes? Well, this la I, I haven't put myself on tape in a long time, but there's this project that I'm excited or interested in. And, uh, so I was like, you know what? I'll put myself on tape. And my friend Bill, who you met earlier, he, uh, you know, we just got the lighting right. And I did three scenes and it says, do one where you do this accent and one where you don't do an accent. And I go, nah, I'm just not doing an accent for this. If they like my acting, I'm going to focus on my acting and not the accent. And if they like me, let's go from there. And they're, they like me. So they, we'll see, we'll see what happens. With you. Uh, but next time I talk, I, I probably didn't get it. But it doesn't no, matter. I, and look, and that is a testament Focus to how you felt yeah, about what you were it. contributing. So for Obliterated. If I can't do it perfectly, I'm not going to spend hours and days trying to get this no, thing right. When Not at that stage. I'm just Not at this stage. Hey, this is my performance. And you could adjust the writing. It's, They're looking it, for a vibe anyway. The, the accent's not essence. necessary anyway. With Obliterated, I was supposed to speak Russian in the original self tape. By the way, I passed on Obliterated because I thought it was a procedural. Oh, yeah. Screw that. I was like, and then two months later, I come back to LA. I get over COVID and I call my buddy and uh, we go to dinner. I'm like, I got to take a break. from. I just need a second. And he's like, well, how did you not test for this show called Obliterated? And I was like, huh? And I look look at my email and I was like, oh man, I passed on it. I, and he was like, it's the funniest thing I've read in years. And I was like, it's a comedy? So like last minute, I he's like, I don't think they found the girl yet. And this is like two months later. And uh, so I did like a last minute tape and I was supposed to speak Russian in it. And I was Good. like, you know what? I'm not gonna do it. So Good. I said it in English. They didn't say anything. Then the test came and I had just been working in Ireland. I didn't have time. I had to go promote the Teen Wolf movie in London over the weekend, do a torture scene, and so then speak test? Russian. So I tested for oh. obliterated, but I still didn't do the Russian. And I, in the test, like I, I finally, for the first time in my life, was like, I'm not going to kill myself. I, if if Good. this is a problem, like we'll we'll figure it out. So I, but I did when we when it got to that scene, I was like, you know, guys, I'm really proud of like the original tape that I did for this scene. Like, do you mind just sending that to Netflix? And they were like. Yeah, we already have you speaking Russian. So I get hired and I had never spoke Russian. <laughs> and you had to do it. Yeah, then I had to do it. <sighs> um, cult killer, Alice Eve, Antonia Banderas, Shelley Hannig in theaters now. Well, when this airs, exactly. It will be in theaters or it's streaming. Yeah. You got to see it. Uh, watch Obliterated. Flux went to the uh went to a festival it'll go to mammoth soon right and then it's gonna be we'll be able to watch it yeah so if you like this woman this actress this talented actress <laughs> you're gonna hopefully check this this stuff out yeah um she, you, you're just a you just have a great energy about it Aww, yeah i'm thanks, really excited that we got to talk today and uh thanks for coming over and um yeah that's about it thank you you rock you too man Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. Thank you, Shelly. That was awesome. Thanks for coming over the house. I always like when people come over, Ryan. It is nice. Zooms aren't that, although we just did Gaten Matarazzo to talk about his last season on Stranger Things, which is going to come out. And yeah. That was great. That worked out. It felt like he was in the room. He just right. had such a presence. But uh, I do like having people here when I had Keanu here. Yeah, Keanu was here and uh, a couple other big ones last week. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We got some big mm -hmm. ones coming up, folks. And Shelly. And, of course, Shelly. Um, I thought that was a great conversation. I really, really enjoyed her. So thank you again, Shelly. Also, again, just go to my Instagram, at the Michael Rosenbaum Instagram link. It has everything. Cameo, Inside of You Store, when we're doing shows for my band Sunspin, et cetera, Rosie's Puppy Fresh Breath for your dog, all that stuff. So you can just go there. Right now, we're going to go to uh, give a shout-out to the top tier patrons these are this is one of the perks of being a top tier you get your name shouted out every episode so why don't we just jump into it 
All right. All right. <clears throat> Nancy D, Leah and Kristen, Little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Nico P, Robert B, Jason W, Sophie M, Raj C, Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jamal F, Janelle B, Mike E, Eldon Supremo. I love seeing these names week in, week out of people that just keep supporting the show. I hope it continues. I hope it's not one time, one day I look at it and I go, all right, Jamal F, Janelle B, thank you guys. That would suck. It was like they all left me. And just Jamal and I, I, Janelle. Yeah, it's just J- Jamal and Janelle B. I mean, that'd be great because I love them. But if it was just, you know, it'd be like, oh, my gosh, everybody abandoned me except Jamal F and Janelle B. Uh, Mike E, El Don Supremo, you missed the Sunspin show. But I know you had you had a thing going on. 99 more, Santiago M. Hi, Santi. Leanne P. Maddie S, Belinda N, Dave Hall. Hello, Dave. Dave Hall. Miss you, buddy. Ryan, Sheila G, Brad D, Ray H, Tabitha T, Tom N, Talia M, Betsy D, Rhiannon C, Corey K, Dev Nexon, Michelle A, Jeremy C, Brandy D, Eugene and Leah. Corey. Corey. Mel S, Christine S, Eric H, Shane R, Andrew M, Oracle, Amanda R, Kevin E, Stephanie K, Jorel, Jam and J, Leanne J, Luna R, Mike F, Stone H, Brian L, Jules M, Kendall L, Jessica B, Kyle F, Kaylee J, Brian A, Marion Louise L, Romeo the Band, Frank B, Jen T. Nikki L, April R M, Randy S, J D W, Arl P, Rachel D, Laurel I L, Melissa H, Nick W. Stephanie and Evan, Charlene A, Don G, Don Giovanni, Jenny B, John, Jennifer R. Tina E, NG Tracy, Junie, Junie, Tasha S, and Keith B. Guys, without you, couldn't do the show. You know that. I love you. I appreciate you more than you know. Thanks for continuing to listen to the show. And uh, word of mouth, it all comes from you. So um, without further ado, um, I guess that's about it. It wouldn't yeah. be without further ado. It'd be this well, is the end of the show. There's, there's no more ado to do. There's no ado. There's no ado. I might make ado. You got to say ado. Yes, I must say I do. Um, no I do. From the Hollywood Hills in Hollywood, California, I'm Michael Rosenbaum. No, oh, I'm Ryan. I'm also here. Yes. A little way to the camera. We love you guys. And uh, all right, guys, thanks again. Ryan, thanks for being here as always. I appreciate you. And uh, be good to yourself. I'll see you very soon.